All right, cool. So, I've been doing this whole Yinman Blue thing. You could start with Atrium Oxide, Indium Oxide, Manganese Oxide, all in the plus three state. But, why do that when you have the skills to start from the corresponding metal, or at least the metal of Indium, which is super cool and fun to play with and easy to melt and yeah, before we make the indium-3 oxide, or just indium oxide, um, got to get out here in the old backyard foundry and uh, mess around with it a bit. Okay, so now that we've seen what's up with indium, 
as an element in its metallic form. Now we can dive into its aqueous chemistry, or aqueous, aqueous? It's watery chemistry. <laughs> so the goal is to dissolve indium in hydrochloric acid to form indium-3 chloride, which we want to increase the surface area as much as possible. We're starting with one mole of indium, or, you know, or so. <laughs> And I got indium all over my fingers. Ah! <laughs> so starting with the uh, hydrochloric acid, this is 37% from the stockroom. Thanks, LTZC. Thanks, Sean Ryland. And I'm using approximately 200 milliliters of this acid per one third of a mole of indium. I split it up into three so that if something breaks I don't lose all of my indium because that stuff is expensive. So now I've got it all going. I'm heating it and stirring it. Now this is an aqueous solution of indium-3 chloride. I'm filtering it. I guess there was a little bit of particulate matter left over, but it was pretty much, it was pretty much totally clean. Oh look, there's this crystal structure of ultramarine on the uh, television screen in the background. Dissolving sodium hydroxide here adding the sodium hydroxide to the indium chloride solution. And this precipitates indium-3 hydroxide. I keep saying three, but indium is a member of what we affectionately call the stupid triangle of elements which only exhibit one oxidation state other than zero. In this case, indium is three or nothing. Oh, that's thick and creamy. So there's my indium hydroxide. We're showing you again because I think it's cool. All right, sitting there, settling down. Got our warnings. Okay. Basically, I just decanted added distilled water and decanted again and again until I felt confident that the water contained only negligible amounts of sodium hydroxide. And now, filtration. Doing the normal stuff, you know, I've got the, got the vacuum trap there. Hit it. This filtration goes super, super slowly. It's pretty annoying. This stuff is like extremely white. It was very hard to get the lighting right on the camera. This is at 30 times speed. 30 times.
and I took it home with me because campus is closed on the weekends. I decided first to dry that indium hydroxide on a steam bath. Once I uh, had this dried out, the next step is to heat this at a pretty high temperature in the several hundred Celsius area, which dehydrates indium-3 hydroxide to indium-3 oxide. Initially orange indium oxide because it exhibits thermochromism, uh, which I did not expect. But once it reaches a uh, cooler temperature, you can see it's yellow, but down on the bottom of the beaker, where I'm scraping it away, it's orange. But uh, yeah, it looks just like sulfur once you're filling a jar with it at room temp. And there it is. <laughs>